pleasures. Mr. Armstrong said this. This is in another book he wrote, Missing Dimension and Sex. He says, before we leave the world scene of the 80s, he wrote that, uh, that final version of the book in 1981, but it's right up to date. It's right up to date if you read that book today uh, with what's happening. He says, bear in mind the present world in revolt is in rebellion against much more than pre-20th century sex repression. He says, and the modern downward spiral of humanity involves a much wider area than sex alone. He says, today the family structure of Western life is endangered by much more than illicit and promiscuous sex. Along with the modern sex rampage of adolescence has come other addictions that titillate, arouse, stimulate, and please the physical senses. All kinds of threats to the family, to society. Verse 5, here in 2 Timothy, it says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. See, there's an outward formality or, or an appearance of godliness. This religion of tolerance, just accept any old behavior. Everybody's included. And meanwhile, we become more and more divided. Nation fighting against nation. Family member against family member. It has a form of godliness, but God says to us, you turn away from it. It may look godly, it may sound religious, but it denies the power of God. God says in Acts 5 that we've got to submit to Him and obey Him if we expect to receive the Spirit of God, the power of God, God's mind into our lives. We've got to turn to God. People, you see, who deny the authority of God by their actions. This is not godliness. You look at the world today, and where is there a group? Where is there a religion? Where is there a church where the Bible really has authority? Where people really look to the Bible as the final say? Where do you see that on this earth today? You don't see it. You don't see people who look to and rely upon the Bible. You don't see people who believe in the return of Jesus Christ, even though the Bible talks about it over and over. And you certainly don't see religions or churches that are really working to uphold the laws of God. Rather, you see an effort to tear down the teachings of God, the laws of God, and to put in its place a shallow form of religion that just exalts all these things that Paul lists in 2 Timothy 3. I mean, the world's filled with, with churches. It has all sorts of uh, missionary projects going on in foreign lands. We have all sorts of messages telling people about Jesus Christ. But it's rare to find a group. It's rare to find a preacher that actually preaches what Jesus Christ preached, that actually brings to you the message of Jesus Christ rather than just talking about Christ, but rather preaching the same message that he preached, the gospel message of a soon-coming kingdom of God to be set up on this earth. Verse 7, it says, Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Always learning, always accumulating knowledge. And we certainly have become a very sophisticated society. But this is the great paradox that Mr. Armstrong talked about so often. With this spread of knowledge, with this increase of technology, and yet so little knowledge or awareness of God and His plan for man. Hosea 4.6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So there's a missing dimension to all of this knowledge accumulation that we see today. We're drifting farther and farther and farther away from God in pursuit of materialism and greedy gain. Verse 13, it says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. You see, that's the paradox. All of this accumulation of knowledge, and yet we see evil increasing. Evil men increasing, worsening, deceiving and being deceived. People deceive themselves by thinking there's no special danger now. People deceive themselves by thinking that, oh well, all those other generations before us thought they were living in the last days as well. 
the end times message has always been popular. But we deceive ourselves when we say that because God gives us specifics, as I said. God gives us the details of what's to play out right before Jesus Christ returns to this earth. And it is true that the disciples in the first century believed that they were going to be living when Jesus Christ returned, but Christ set them straight on that, and they eventually knew that it wasn't to happen in their day, and others have been off down through the centuries. But now look at the days that we're living in today. Look at the signs of the times. You can know, Jesus said, you can know that it's even at the doors if, if we'll just look if we'll open our eyes and see. I mean, it's only going from bad to worse. It's not getting better. There's plenty of people, I suppose, with hope-filled messages about, well, if we can just get this group in or these politicians to lead us, then everything's going to turn around. And yet, look at the problems as they just get worse and worse. Let's look at Matthew 24 and see what Jesus said in this critical prophecy that so many overlook in religion today. Prophecy that came direct from Jesus Christ. This is Christ's teaching. This is a prophecy from Jesus. Matthew 24, verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? I mean, what will be the sign of you returning to this earth and the end of this world or the end of this age, as it should read or as it means? Tell us the signs so that we can know they wanted to know. See, they weren't radicals or extremists. It wasn't crazy for them to think this way. Jesus Christ didn't say, oh, why are you into those end-time prophecies again? Why don't you get your mind on something else? Instead, Jesus proceeded to go through the details bit by bit by bit and to show them this is what's to happen. In the latter days, the focus throughout was on today. Now, these disciples, as sincere as their intentions were, I mean, they didn't even have yet the Spirit of God. That came in Acts 2 after Jesus had, had been gone and was ascended to heaven. And then the Spirit of God came into their minds, and then they began to know and understand more about the teachings and the truth of God. But really, what Jesus was telling them here was for you. It was for us to understand, because it's for the last days. Verse 4, it says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. You can put this passage together with Revelation 6, this first horseman of the apocalypse. This white horse, religious deception, widespread religious deception. Many people, by the millions, deceived about Christ and his message so much as I said earlier about Jesus Christ the man the person of Christ and yet a complete rejection of his message about a soon coming kingdom of God where God rules this earth God's family administering the government of God drop down to verse 14 we mentioned this previously and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Now the word end here has to do with the end of a work or the end of an era. And when Mr. Armstrong came on the scene back in the middle part of the 20th century, he started proclaiming the plain truth about the kingdom of God and that it was to rule this world. It was a unique message, a message, in fact, that this world had not heard for many centuries. And he went around the world with that message, talking about the soon coming return of Jesus Christ, following on right where the disciples left off in the first century, echoing that same message that Jesus proclaimed in John 14, if I go, I will come again. Now traditional Christianity has utterly failed to preach about this Jesus, the Jesus who said, if I go, I will come again. I will return to this earth. Then verse 21, again we alluded to this earlier, for then shall be great tribulation, 
such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And then the next verse that talks about that it's going to get so bad that if not for God's intervention, we just wipe out all of humanity. Back to Mr. Armstrong's booklet, he says, God is not going to intervene or send Jesus Christ to set up a better civilization and a wonderful, happy, peace-loving world tomorrow until humanity and its leaders have had to admit their utter failure in providing peaceful, happy, and useful lives on this earth. Even today, most people in the Western world do not want to hear much about God. They want God to keep Himself out of their lives. See, even today, you don't hear this message. Even as bad as it's getting in this world, you don't hear much about this message. Well, it has a happy ending. Thank God for that. He says He's going to intervene because of the elect. Verse 29, it says, immediately after the tribulation, then what's to happen next? Verse 30, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So Christ is returning the second time in the exact same manner that He left this earth. You can see that over in Acts chapter 1. Only this time, he's, he's not coming to die for us. He's coming to forcibly put an end to human suffering and sin and to set up the kingdom of God on this earth. Well, that's all we have time for today. But before we leave, we want to tell you about our latest offering in the Trumpet Daily reprint series. It's titled, Are We Living in the Last Days? This brochure is available for free right now at thetrumpetdaily.com. If you want to continue your study now while it's fresh in your mind, just go to thetrumpetdaily.com and download today's PDF. If you want a hard copy, we'll send you that for free as well. Just call the number on your screen and ask for, Are We Living in the Last Days? And when you call, ask the operator to enroll you in the Armstrong College Bible Correspondence Course. This is such an exciting study. It's filled with practical instruction, fascinating history, and eye-opening prophecy. It's a 36-lesson course that will plunge you into your Bible. If you make the daily commitment, your Bible will come alive as never before. This course will give you the solid bedrock foundation you need to make the most of the other literature offers that we have for you. We have so much literature to offer, in fact, there's really no limit to how far you can go with this. So much of it does depend on you. We're not trying to inundate you with thousands of pages to read, but you've got to start somewhere, and we're here to help you with that. In fact, if you haven't looked at thetrumpetdaily.com yet, you need to visit that site. It's a user-friendly website. Today's broadcast, for example, is prominently posted right at the top. You can't miss it. And we've tried to be somewhat selective with our literature offers in order to encourage you to get after it every day. Make this correspondence course the one constant in your daily Bible study, and then supplement that study with the smaller works that we make available during the week. If you manage to keep up, you will learn a lot about God's Word. All right, don't forget about the websites. If you missed any part of today's program, you can watch it again right now if you go to thetrumpetdaily.com or our YouTube channel at The Trumpet Daily. And remember to visit our sister site at thetrumpet.com. We post new content on that website every day. Visit thetrumpet.com and understand your world. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you again tomorrow morning.